Right, okay, so Taylor Guardado, PFL, thank you very much for coming on MMA Lowdown. It's finally good to get you on. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you for having me on here. How are you? Not bad. I'm not bad at all. Just looking forward to talking to you, certainly after seeing your last performance. So your last fight, you defeated Laura Sanchez, PFL 6. How has the celebrations been after that? Because that was a, a fairly dominant win. Um. Well, I, I haven't really done much, honestly. <laughs> um, I took out a bunch of my uh, training partners that have helped me so far throughout my camps consistently mm-hmm. for years, honestly. Um, I took them all out for dinner for slash a birthday dinner uh, last night, actually. But other than that, I'm back in training already. Um, I'm not injured, so I feel good. So is there not any like, so let's just say you're going into training. I mean, the athlete in you perhaps does not maybe go out and celebrate the way some people do. So you sacrifice a ton to get to that position. Do you not go out, have a wee drink and just kind of <laughs> put the hair down a wee bit and nothing like that? Um, well, I mean, after the fight, I was drinking like immediately. So awesome. <laughs> they, <laughs> they gave me a bunch of free drink tickets. So as there soon as they gave me those, I was like, well, okay, if you say so. <laughs> so as I said, you defeated the uh, lightweight contender, Laura Sanchez. Now, how do you feel overall about your performance if you were to kind of look back on it? Um, I've rewatched the fight already um, a couple of times now. I really liked my wrestling. I thought everything was well-timed except for the one shot that um, I kind of I got reversed on. I feel like that I kind of forced that shot. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, that was my only one that really didn't feel natural. Um, but my hands, even when we stood up, I was landing punches. Um and I, I don't know. I just, I felt good. My cardio felt great that fight. Like overall, I felt good. I mean, I was bummed I didn't finish it, um, but Laura's tough, man. So, I mean, it is what it is. So just just going on that in terms of what you were trying to do. So I had Laura on the show maybe about a week before the fight. And yeah. as, you, as you would say when you're very confident in yourself, she did talk about her preparation. She talked about what she's going to bring whether it be the wrestling, whether it be boxing, she's got it all, she's going to answer all the adversity that comes her way. Did you feel at any point any danger or anything that you had to work on a bit of extra for Laura and what she brought to the table? Um, no disrespect to her, but no. I mean, I, I felt like I, I, I know what I'm capable of and I know what I can bring to the table when it comes to a fight. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just bringing that little dog out of me right before we walk out there. Um, and I had a really good corner with me that were able to really rile me up and get me going right before the fight. I warm, I, I warmed up properly. So I just felt like nothing really died. I don't know. I felt safe and, and like I knew what I was doing and it was a, it was a smart and safe win. That's how it looks. So when we see you getting out there and stuff that there doesn't seem to be any fear of that, we hear about fighters who, have fear, they've got this kind of feeling inside, even they're in the cage. GSP even spoke about it, you know, he was always kind of had this fear, but um, you don't seem to get that for you. You kind of seem like you're in there and you know you know what the expectations are. And is that pretty accurate? No, I have the worst anxiety. Oh, and do I, you? Freak out. <laughs> I literally like lose my, my shit the entire week before the fight. I'm, I, I don't know, I lose my, I, I think everyone kind of does. They, they get nervous, they get in their mm. own heads, especially with PFL. We had to quarantine for so many days up mm. there that we like, I, I had a lot of adversities in the last week too. So it was mm. just like one thing after the other. And my head was just kind of like, should you be fighting? Should I be doing this? Should I be wow. here? And then I was like, at the last second, I'm like, I'm here. I'm prepared as I'm going to get, let's just do this. Well, you hate it very well. Thanks. <laughs> so, Thanks. <laughs> so you started your PFL campaign. You're now two and zero, which is amazing given the amount of competition that's in there. We've seen some standout fighters such as yourself. We've seen people not so much who have came in with big anticipation expectations, not went their way. How do you mm-hmm. feel overall about the division you're in and your chances? We know where you are now, but how do you feel overall? Is it exciting? Is it what you expected? Um. Overall, yeah. I mean, like it's 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 a great lineup of women. I mean, like what I think is, in my opinion, I, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but like, like most of the girls in the division, minus like maybe two or three of them, are natural, not 155 ers Like half of us don't cut weight. Like I I don't cut weight, um, like at all. Really, I'm walking around probably like 158 right now. Um, and I mean, like overall, I I don't know. I just feel like 
it's well set up. We get enough time in between the fights to recover and to get your mind ready for the next one, get your body ready for the next one. And I, I think I like the distance between the fights, like the six and the eight weeks, and then we're going to have more after this next one because um, it allows you to keep your cardio going and getting better, in my opinion. Like, I I feel like I, I, I like the setup of the whole um, season. Yeah, no, it does seem good. It seems very popular with fighters as well. So just going back a little bit, so I've personally been perhaps more aware of the PFL in the last year. And, of course, being able to see people like yourself come into it as well. So, just to get a bit of your background on you, I did watch some of your amateur stuff. So, we know that a good while back, you were tipped as a very, very hot prospect. I've seen your amateur fights with Ashley Evan smith other people, Ron DeRousey as well, back in, I think it was 2011. So, that was a massive gap if we go from then until now. What, what caused such a big gap? Was that just kind of a bit of uncertainty about whether you wanted to get down into that career or not? Um, well, it was injuries. Um, my knee was a mess. Like I, I tore a lot of things and I know my ACL, my MCL and my meniscus had tears. Um, so they had to do full reconstruction on that. And then like the physical therapy after the reconstruction kind of was wonky and I just didn't feel like confident on it. Um, so it was just a matter of building confidence. And then, um, I, I had my son and, and we kind of like traveled a lot. I just enjoyed my twenties a little bit. Like, yeah, I, yeah. You know, like <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> and, I, I, and I kept telling myself I have enough time. And I think being able to tell myself and really believe that, Hey, I can still do this. And mm-hmm. then getting this opportunity and just being prepared and, and ready for it. I think that made all the difference. And during, during that kind of time, of course, so we know you had, you had uh, an extensive amateur background. Then you turned pro not too long ago. See, in between that then, did you regular type training or did you keep an intensity that was similar to you being in a kind of fight mode? I literally am always in the gym. So I work yeah. at the gym mm-hmm. and then I, I I'm I basically live here. It's it's ridiculous. So like I <laughs> I don't like fight when it comes to fight camps we turn it up a little bit more, but overall, like I'm literally always training and always working out. So it's like, it's, it's, it, I, I guess there was a little turn up, but I mean, like overall it, there's not a huge difference between my fight camps and my training on, except for specifics. No, it says, uh, Nate Diaz said something once about, um, always be ready for the best, even on your worst day. So that pretty much seems to be the ethic. So, as I said, done a bit of research. I looked into a wee bit of stuff you were talking about, about kind of depression that circulated, certainly in your own case. So if we're going back then, it wasn't too long ago, but even then it was a bit of a kind of taboo subject. It's only now that we're seeing a lot of fighters talking about it. Fighters who, at the top of their game, people might not think that they suffer it. But are you noticing a kind of change on the stance now that makes it more understood? Do you feel like it's less of a kind of taboo topic for MMA? Yeah, especially um, like I, I, in general, depression shouldn't be, you know, a taboo uh, topic at at all, you know, like everyone needs to just discuss what's going on in order for, to allow help to, to find them and to get the help that they need. But Mm -hmm. I mean, like, especially the type of depression that I had, it was postpartum depression after I had my son. Um, I don't know. I was just like, I was in such a weird headspace, like, and I couldn't get out of it and, and, and what actually got me out of it was getting back into training like hard, like, cause I would, I would work out at home. Like my husband would hold mitts for me and stuff like that. But I mean, like when I actually got back into training, that's when like, I don't know. I felt like it literally was just like a weight lifting off of my chest. Like it was yeah. really cool. So I've been able to see a lot of the gym life that you're getting on the family home life. It seems to be now, if we're kind of doing a comparison, it seems like a very good community, a good environment to be surrounded with as well. So how important has that been in keeping you achieving these types of goals? So, I mean, do you think that without that, you would not be in a position you're in now? Absolutely. Um, I think when it comes to the leaders at the gym, the head coaches, Eric Nixick, Dennis yeah. Davis, um, Nate Pettit, all of them at the gym, Eddie Baracco, like they set the foundation and then they build us up and, and you, we surround ourselves with champions. We have Francis Ngannou here, you know, we have uh, yeah. like Brandon Moreno trains out of here. Like we have champions on champions. We have people that are coming up and into the champion ranks, whether it's in 
Bellator, PFL, um, UFC, you know, and I think being able to have that foundation of coaches kind of build us up as a family and, mm-hmm. and really make our structure strong has, has just, it, it gives us a level of confidence, like not cockiness, but like a mm-hmm. confidence, like we're, we're, we're sure of ourselves and our training and our, and our coaches and ourselves. So, I mean, I, that, yeah, I, it's, it's super important to have that. I think wherever you go, whether that's regular family life or, or gym life, um, but extreme couture for sure. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Yeah. And that, that's the vibe you get. It seems very close knit from the photos for the kind of sparring. I've spoke to Eddie a couple of times and um, the way that he comes across in himself seems very positive, seems to know his fighters inside out and stuff. So that's awesome. So, Francis and Ganu, now I've seen um, a little kind of jokey sparring video between yourselves. What's he like in person? He looks like an absolute giant, you know? He's literally the nicest person. Like, he's just, he'll Mm. talk to everyone at the gym and he will, uh, I don't know, he's just, he's genuine. He's just a genuine, good, nice person. And he's he's a jokester and he always picks on me and it cracks me up, but he's, he's a good guy. Yeah, honestly, it seems like an amazing place, right? So, Extreme yeah. Couture, if you were to describe it in one word, how would you describe it overall to anybody? Um, sickos. Like, <laughs> that's the best <laughs> word I can think of because we use that term a lot. Like, you, you're a sicko when you're training. We do sicko Saturdays to do our conditioning. Um, and I think it comes down to a mindset that we all kind of have when it, whether it's training, fighting, whatever, we're all a bunch of sickos. So sickos. <laughs> Is that sickos in in the sense of like like being obsessed and being kind of overwhelmed, like over the top with everything that you do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, awesome. it, we're all aware that we uh, it, in this in this sport, especially, you have to give your all, or you're not going to get anything in return. So I mean, we're all a bunch of crazy psychopath sickos with when it comes to this so i mean we're all pushing each other and, and, and pushing ourselves to be our very best and yourself along with many other fighters in that gym you're all one good active win streaks and you've all got belts and all that kind of stuff so says it all really so jumping on to the present so you're fighting larissa paquette show it was announced yesterday that i seen now the winner faces the winner of jenna fabian and kayla harrison in the finals how do you feel mm-hmm. about that Wait, what was the question? I'm sorry. Um, how do you feel about that? Just uh, seeing the announcements, seeing the opponent you've got and seeing the potential that you could eat. You could not only just get Kayla Harrison, but Jenna Fabian as well. Um, I'm excited about the matchups. Personally, I'm glad I'm not fighting Jenna because that's my girl. Like yeah. <laughs> she, she was training out in, at Extreme while uh, she was out here. And then her and I got like extremely close. You know, obviously we're in the same tournament. So mm-hmm. she she helped me a little bit with my fight for Laura. Um and and her coach held for me when I was out there for a while by myself. Um and I mean like yeah so I'm happy I'm not facing her. Um mm-hmm. I'm aware that we will if we do both win, yeah. like you know, knock them I want us to win. But um we, we mm-hmm. are very well that we'll have to fight each other and we just know that we're gonna put on an amazing show. But I think with the other two girls too um, obviously I think they're the favorites, um, for obvious reasons, but I mean, I'm confident in myself, my coaching, everything, um, that I know what to do and how to win regardless of who they put in front of me. So, yeah. And that, that's the attitude that you've uh, exerted all the time. So I'm, I'm not surprised at all. Are you in camp at the moment? Um, not yet. We're still a little over eight weeks out. Um, so I'm, I'm just going light this week. I'm still training. Mm-hmm. I'm still in the gym, but i um, about to do wrestling practice soon. But uh, I, I think uh, I'm just taking it a little lighter this week, just kind of letting my body heal a little bit. My back's a little messed up overall, but I mean, like nothing, nothing's hurting. So I'm just kind of easing back into fight camp. Awesome. So how are you feeling overall? So if we're just looking at it again for the outside, so you started like the rest of these fighters that you're up against, the other three fighters in the PFL. So you all started, you've all got different stages of your kind of abilities and where these have gotten to. Um, do you ever sit for a moment and just think that I've only turned pro recently, here I am uh, in, in a big spotlight against people where there is immense hype and yeah. the prize that you could be getting. I mean, it's a lot of money, it's a belt, a lot that could be added to legacy. How does it feel when you sit and think about that? Um, it's, it's overwhelming. Um, but at the same time, 
uh, I think you have to just be ready to, if an opportunity is handed to you, you have to be ready to step up. Like regardless of the opportunity, you have to look past your insecurities. You have to look past your doubts and you just have to go for it. And I think that's kind of what I did with this because I was a, I was very much a last minute replacement in this tournament. Um, and, and, and I, as soon as I got the offer, I was scared shitless, but, um, I spoke to like several of the coaches here and then, um, I remember me and, uh, Eric were sitting at the the front desk and I was like, yo, they just offered me PFL. And he was like, well, fuck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and yeah. and it, like, as soon as, as they are like, why wouldn't you, you know, like we believe in you, we know what you're capable of. And, and then, then I remember my confidence, I guess. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I am capable of that. So, I mean, like, but overall it's just been like, sometimes when I just sit there and I'm like, holy shit, I'm really doing this. Like, <laughs> I'm like, this is freaking cool to be doing this for my, like mm-hmm. now this will be my fourth pro fight, you know, technically. So I'm like, this is, this is insane. Like, and I'm not taking a second for granted. No. And I mean, like I said, it's, there's a big spotlight. We know about the UFC and Bellator and all that, but the PFL has gotten some type of spotlight. I mean, not just for the fighters, but for the, the way that they've handled the pandemic and the unique format that they bring as well. So, no, you can tell that it's a really good opportunity and it's, it's awesome to see. So, Larissa, we know she ain't the slouch because I've seen her fight and like yourself, she's uh, notched up a good few wins. What do you see when you watch her fight? Um, what do you know about her style and what do you think about it compared to yourself? Um, She is kind of... <laughs> She's very um, unpredictable, I guess. That would be my best way to... to she's tenacious and unpredictable. So she she swings kind of wild a little bit. But I mean, um, obviously very strong punches. Um, I, I, I'm i not sure she, she's... I think it's going to be a good matchup. I think it's going to... I think it's going to shock a lot of people what happens in our fight, um, which is what I'm hoping. Obviously, I, I know for a fact I'm going to be the underdog. Um, but I think that a lot of people are going to be shocked when they see how well I do in that fight. Do you prefer being the underdog? Or do you prefer that a uh, lack of pressure that you, you don't need when with that kind of tag? I genuinely thought I was in I was the underdog in both of my last fights until someone was like, No, did you know you were the favorite? And I was like, yeah. I've never known I was a favorite. <laughs> like I always assume I'm the underdog just because of my record and like who I don't know. I just always assume so I've always had that underdog mindset, I guess. So like I have to go out there and win for just to prove that I'm not the underdog. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. So see an amateur, did you fight at 135 pounds? Um, I fought anywhere from thirty five to forty five as an amateur. So, what's to say you went? Obviously, it's kind of early days. There's still a couple of matches to go, but with that belt, life changing money, more attention going on that as well. Um, we know that 155 pound outside the PFL, as far as I'm aware, for women is uh, non-existent in mm-hmm. any other organisation. But because you've kind of floated below that weight before, would you ever be tempted? And have you looked at any other fighters that you would love to fight? Um, Given at fifty five. Uh, no, so knowing that 155 is kind of like a PFL thing, what's to see you win? You're going to get a lot of attention. You might oh. very well stay with the PFL for a long, long yeah. time, but what's to say? Have you kind of looked at the roster and other organisations and thought, if the chance ever came up to maybe drop weight and fight them, have you ever seen anybody that you would love to test yourself against? Um, honestly, just anyone at 135, because I feel like I, I feel strong and big at 155, but at 135, I'm more at my natural weight. Like I'm not a huge 155 or very obviously, but um, at one at 135, my arms are long. Like I feel faster. Um, so I think if it came down to it, just anyone at 135, and I, I'd love to prove myself at 135 again one day. But mm-hmm. for now, I'm very very happy at 155, not cutting weight and and trying to make a million dollars <laughs> yeah exactly keep that in mind just now so people in the sport they say they're in it for competition money after all they're like a prize fighter what's your main motivation going into fighting uh, my son uh it, it's it's i get videos of him watching my he hasn't been to any of my live fights obviously um but i get videos and pictures of him watching my fight and he'll be like that's my mama and like oh, freaking <laughs> out 
it's so cute. And then like he, he, we have like a punching bag and workout stuff in our garage and he wanted his own. So we got him like a little mini punching bag and gloves and stuff. And he just wants to do everything that I'm doing all the time. So when he's here at the gym, he's running around going crazy, just making friends. And I'm like, that's the best thing I could have wanted in my life is just to have a little mini me that's obsessed with the same thing that I'm obsessed with. And I can show him stuff if he wants to learn. I'm not going to tell him that he has to do this or anything, but I mean, like if he does want to jump into this and do it, I can be like, here's where we can start, you know? Yeah, that's it. And I mean, it really changes the purpose of becoming a parent, doesn't it? It's like you almost mm-hmm. forget what it was like beforehand. And then suddenly everything changes decisions, outlooks on life. It completely distorts in ways you never imagined. So that's cool to see. That's cool to see. And yeah. unique because I a lot of people uh, don't have the ability to bring their kids into a kind of fight zone and a gym and to learn a lot of kind of combat and stuff, which could help them in the future as well. So, no, that's awesome. Yeah. So, Larissa, we'll jump back. We keep jumping back to Larissa. So, yeah. as we said, we know about Larissa's uh, abilities. We know about yourself, putting you both together. Are you expecting it to be a long night or are you going in here expecting a finish? I'm going in there expecting a smart fight. Um, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna do what I, I need to do to win. Um, whether that's a finish, which I would obviously love a finish and I'm sure people would love to see me get a finish, but if I have to drag her to the deep waters and go make her go to the third round with me and, and put her through that, I have no problem doing that as well. Yep. Friday, August 27th, your biggest fight to date, would you say so? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, there's, there's no question. I have a ton of respect for Larissa as well, like as a person, as a fighter. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, like, when we get in there, it's all business, and and I I like to, in the in the night with good business. So, <laughs> damn right. So there's a lot of momentum, as we said. A lot. Of, well, I wouldn't say much risk because you're in a a very fortunate opportunity. You're going to give it your all. You've got big rewards. What's the best way for fans to kind of keep up to date with camp and get to see your progress as you go into this big fight? They can follow me on um, Instagram. That's where I'm most active at Taylor mm-hmm. Gordito. Um, which means little fat kid in Spanish. So that's funny. I'm not even Mexican, but I thought it was funny. (laughs) (laughs) I just love food, but, um, but yeah, I think I'm more active on there. Um, I post really just some, some dumb pictures and some dumb videos and a lot of like wholesome family stuff. Um, But yeah, I also have the same handle on Twitter. I'm a lot less active on that. I should probably (laughs) do things with that, but I don't know. But, uh, and then um, I have a Facebook. They can also follow just Taylor Gardado. Awesome. So I'll get that shared as well. So, Kayla Harrison, have you had a chance? We know she's very dominant. We've seen what she brings to the table. At this point, nobody's ever, ever going to bet against her. With Mm -hmm. your abilities, with what you bring to the table, you're going to give her a tough night. Should that ever be a fight in the future? Absolutely. Um, I don't think she's really fought a wrestler before, and I think that I wrestle pretty well. Um, and I knew I know how to move out of the way of takedowns, hip tosses, judo, all that stuff. I've progressed um, ridiculously since I've last fought a judo girl, Rhonda. Um, so I mean, like, I think I think that fight again would come down to smart decisions and implement implementing my own game plan instead of focusing on hers. And I think that's where a lot of girls make a lot of mistakes is they start to worry about her hip tossing or her getting them to the ground that they forget what they have to actually do as well so i think just making smart decisions and doing what i know how to do would help me win that fight no i was telling uh, coach eddie i was saying it yourself and jenna i think that you used to are the biggest threats to kayla's game um Mm -hmm. personally just going by what we've seen and what our opponents have tried to bring um i think that yourselves present the most danger Thank you. Thank you. I hope so. I, I'd love to see Jenna win. <laughs> it's just, just really exciting. PFL, it's just everything's working out really great. So just to wrap this up, what kind of tailor could we be expecting on the night that we've not seen before? Um, I think you're going to see a little bit more aggressive um, nature out of me. I, I think you'll see a lot more of my uh, boxing come into play as well. Um, I haven't gotten to use it too much uh, just because winning with wrestling so I mean (laughs) I think that you'll see a little more uh, boxing and a little more aggressiveness and um, just a lot more focus and sharpness and and you're gonna see me win I don't doubt it 
I appreciate you taking time to come on. I'm glad we finally got it sorted all the way from Vegas to sunny Scotland. But I'll be tuning in. You enjoy the rest of your cam and I'll uh, hit you up nearer the time. See how you're getting on. Sounds good. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. You take care, all right? All right, you too.